Hey guys, happy belated Father's Day to all the dads out there. We're going to do a pretty quick garden tour for the week. And my arm is pretty tired, so I'm gonna give, <laughs> give the camera to Hand this guy over. for most of it. But we'll just walk through the garden and I'll give you updates on how things are doing. And we'll talk about a couple surprises this week. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy, but things are finally right. With you and I, the future is bright. Okay, we'll just start over here at the hygge culture bed and we'll make our way make our way down to the berms and swales. This bed is doing really well. I planted some tomatoes, I planted lots of flowers, some cabbages, and then recently I came in and I planted a lot of cucurbits. So I did some summer squash, some winter squash, and some cantaloupe. So I kind of just spread it throughout the bed. They haven't come up yet, but they should come up in the next few. So in just a couple weeks here, I'll share a full hygge culture update like one year later from when we really got it going. I just want to give it a, a little bit of time to really establish itself and for everything to sprout. I can see one of the seedlings that I planted just barely poking its way through right here. So that's a good sign. But I've been really good about watering in the seeds because we've had a huge dry spell slash heat wave this past week. It's been like consistently in the high 80s and 90s and super, super hot, super, super sunny. So really important to keep watering those planted seeds in. Just gonna point out these tomato plants in here because they really like the hygge culture bed. Um, I believe this is a cherry and over there is another cherry and they just seem to do really well. I actually let them just go completely wild in the hygge culture bed and I've had no problems with that at all. The one thing that did suffer a little bit with the heat is the fava beans. When it gets too hot for them, they drop their flowers. So unfortunately, we'll probably lose some beans from, from that, but we do have some beans forming on the fava beans. So here's some beans in there. I'm trying to figure out what these are. It's supposed to be cauliflower, maybe? Honestly, I don't even remember. Didn't we see cauliflower in there already? I think this one's a Brussels sprout and this one's a cauliflower. <laughs> Got a little head forming here. I think that's broccoli. Yeah, it looks like broccoli. And there's another little broccoli here. So the brassicas actually have been doing really well. And I imagine with this cooler week we're supposed to get if they don't start producing heads which is a good thing because you don't want them producing heads when it's hot like this if they can just wait a couple more days then we should start to get some nice heads next week with the temperatures in the 70s and i'm really excited because they're big beautiful healthy plants so big beautiful healthy plants typically produce big beautiful heads but we'll see we'll see what happens and a quick reminder all of those brassicas we thought were complete goners because the slugs like almost took them out when they were little itty bitty babies, but they bounced back like 100%, except for a couple that died. Other than that, they bounced back a lot. Wait, slug actually, Mageddon survivors. Slug me. I wanted to take a look at this kohlrabi. I planted kohlrabi for the first time this year, and I thought the slugs totally destroyed it and I wouldn't get to try it, but it looks like we have a couple kohlrabi that will be edible. See the kohlrabi in here. There's the little root. I'll let this guy grow for a bit longer. There's another one over there, and another guy right here. If you watched my last garden tour, I talked a lot about the garlic problems we've had with the leek moth. I'm very happy to say that I'm not seeing any new damage. The, the BT application seems to have been effective. All the garlic scapes I picked for our garlic scape pesto were delicious, and I'm gonna be doing another big harvest of garlic scapes 
this week as well. So making more pesto because I already finished all the pesto I made and probably making like a triple or quadruple batch so I can freeze a lot of it. We're going to visit the artichoke plant at the end because it's my big surprise of the week and I want to save the best for last. Over here we've mulched our potatoes using the root stout method. So they're looking really good. You can. We have lots of little baby tomatoes. Um, these are determinate, so they tend to produce earlier than my indeterminates. Just three, they're called glacier tomatoes. So let me just show you guys the little baby tomatoes. I also found a little ground cherry snack. It's a little itty bitty one. Still delicious. I have this bad habit of throwing the ground cherry wrappers back in the hay and then being like, oh, ground cherry, and then going to pick it up and it's empty. Quick note about determinate tomatoes. You don't prune them. You just let them go wild because determinate means that they'll only produce a certain set amount of tomatoes. And so you don't want to prune off any of those branches because they're going to produce what they're going to produce on those branches. Whereas the indeterminates, you let them go real tall and you prune them back because they'll keep producing as they grow. The garlic here is looking really nice. Lots of scapes to pick. They're more than ready to pick. And we'll be harvesting this in about four weeks. So probably right around July 20th, we'll be harvesting all the garlic. It's gonna be quite the endeavor. I'll be more than halfway through this pregnancy. We have like 300 to 400 heads of garlic. The corn's doing really well. I'm noticing a much better success rate so far with the glass gem and then the popcorn and the sweet corn is just not quite as big and lush so we'll see next year i'm going to plant them separately so varieties will be separate because i do want to see if that makes a big difference when it comes to the pollination we have a lot of potatoes here and oh look this is a surprise the first potato flowers So I'm seeing some flowers, which means one, I need to come in here, well, <laughs> with some help to mulch these guys. And actually I should try to come in here and water because once you start to see those blossoms, that means that the potatoes are starting to form and it's been so dry and hot and I want to make sure that I get them water so they can produce. But over in this area, as you've seen before, we have some tomatillos, which have little baby fruit on them. So they form in these little lanterns and then if you like peel back the lantern, you can actually see the little fruit forming. I love tomatillos, I love salsa verde and so does this guy behind the camera. And you also really like eating them fresh. They taste kind of like a green apple. Yeah, they're very sour. Very sour, but sweet. They don't really have a tomato-y flavor at all. I don't know, they're, they're really delicious. Okay, so I direct seeded for the second time in this area because our slug issue has gotten better. So I planted some summer squash here, two rows of beets, and then more summer squash, and it looks like they are just coming up now. So that's awesome. And the brassicas here are all doing great. No signs of heads yet on most of them, which is a really good thing because I hear you, Sage. Hey, what are you she doing? Comes. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Sagey. Welcome to the party. The, the fact that I don't see heads yet is a really good sign because I'm hoping that means that we're going to get some nice, beautiful heads once the weather cools down. Yeah, no signs. I'm hoping that means really beautiful cheddar cauliflower. I've never had success with cauliflower. Never. Do you want to come in the garden too with me? Do you? You're a cute little fluff ball. <laughs> Her foot sticking out. <laughs> I don't have anything on the trellises to show you guys just yet, except for a couple little survivors, but I do have something I want to mention about what I am going to be doing with the trellises. And I'll touch on that after we go through the garden, because I have trays of seedlings that are about to be planted that I want to show you. Okay, 
Okay, so we are over in Nightshade Alley. We have our tomatoes all along the middle and our peppers on the outside. The tomatoes are doing phenomenally, like really, really well. <laughs> too well that they're really hard to keep up with. I need to come in and prune them again, tie them up again. Um, most of them, so shockingly, ended up with two liters, like out of nowhere. It was impossible to like catch them. So I'm just gonna let them be and I'll just keep them trimmed really well on the bottom. And then the peppers had a setback with cool temperatures in May, like all of May and even early June was like cool. And then we got this heat wave and now they're sending off all these dark green leaves again. So I'm really happy to see that. This is my lone surviving direct seeded squash right here. This is a Jarradale squash, which is actually my favorite. So I'm really happy to see that one of those survived. I have more Jarradale that I'll be planting, but I'll be transplanting them. This one was direct seeded and it's the only survivor. It's finally time to reveal the eggplant, take their row cover off and let them... Free. They're free. I took the row cover off because they're plenty big enough to survive flea beetles. They're about to set off their blossoms, so I needed to make sure that pollinators could get to them. So as soon as they send off their blossoms, you want to uncover them or else you're going to have to hand pollinate or you're going to get no fruit. Anywho, my cucumbers that I planted in the little pots are all doing fantastic. So another win with our Creative Slug Solutions. Sounds like a company name, Creative Slug Solutions. <laughs> it's beautiful. Another ground cherry snack. I feel like the company would have like a a beautifully decorated logo of a slug. <laughs> oh no, the fox lover are finishing off. These guys, the fox will have lasted like a good couple weeks. So if you're looking for a flower that blooms for a long time in the garden, for most of like late spring, the foxglove is an excellent choice. And this herb garden is just so full. <laughs> it's just very full. Yeah, things are just really happy. I still need to come in and harvest this chamomile, which I meant to do last week and then got distracted by a million other things. And I'm also going to save some of this seed from the... What's it called? The sorrel? Oh yeah, I'm gonna save some of this sorrel seed and do more sorrel. It's such an awesome green and it's a perennial, so it comes back year after year. I'm also enjoying just watching how much the pollinators love this yarrow. Oh, we said we'd harvest the strawberries tonight. Yeah. We should do that. Okay. Let's do that right after this. Okay, I just wanna point out a couple things over in the berms and swales. No issues with the berms and swales, other than the chickens getting loose and <laughs> trying to climb in the beds. <laughs> but I did, I did replant some things, and it looks like they're all coming up. Yeah, no issues, no issues here. Happy to say that. I need to come in um, and actually trim all of my onions back because the greens get so tall that they make the plant fall over. So tomorrow, I'm gonna do that. Tomorrow, tomorrow. We're gonna skip the raised beds today because nothing exciting is happening there except for raspberries that are getting close to ready. Yeah. But I want to show you guys the <laughs> transplants that are about to go in the ground to grow on the arch trellis, and I want to show you the star of the show and what's happening with that right now. Okay, here are my transplants. We have all different kinds of winter squash <laughs> and cucumelons. I also have some summer squash and pole beans. The pole beans are going on the trellis, the winter squash are going on the trellis, and the cucumelons are going on a trellis. But the summer squash, I'm going to plant 
somewhere. Probably some in the Huga culture. The thing is I replanted a lot of places where they didn't come up. So I'll have to be creative about where I put them. I'll figure it out. I'll find some spots for them. But I'm really excited because we love making zoodles in the summer with like a creamy cashew sauce. It's like one of our favorite meals and I'll have to share it with you guys. But especially with garlic scapes, like chopped in there. Mm, it's so good. And then like some fresh basil on top. I'm really looking forward to that. And we discovered zucchini chips last year. Yeah, zucchini chips is a fun way to use when you have a lot of zucchini. Pop them in the dehydrator, then bake them in the oven for like a minute. <laughs> and then you can dip them in hummus and just eat them like a snack. So a couple different summer squash recipes and food inspiration videos coming your way. Hopefully once we get some, once we get some squash. Okay, so two days ago, I was like, oh, I'm gonna take a quick walk in the garden, which I totally recommend. If you're feeling frustrated or down or just need a little pick-me-up, just take a little walk in the garden and look for something new that you haven't seen yet. And it always picks up my spirits. And so this really picked up my spirits because we already have artichokes coming up. If I can crawl around this potato, there's a, a, a little section right here coming up. We've got a section over here coming up. So I planted these artichokes, well, I planted six artichokes last April, so over a year ago. And one plant produced for me last summer in its first year, and it wasn't until like the August, it was late summer, and it only produced one, made st one main like stem. And I think we got like six artichokes off of it. This already has two stems. It's only June. It's a perennialized artichoke, so it'll probably continue to produce a lot. And it's huge. I mean, this thing is probably double or triple the size of what any of them grew into last year. It's gorgeous, it's healthy, and we're gonna have artichokes soon. So that made me really excited because New York grown artichokes, upstate New York grown artichokes, aren't really a thing. I mean, you just don't really find them anywhere. I don't know anybody who's grown them. and. It's just, it's just like my special thing that I get to have in the garden. And I'm definitely gonna keep, keep trying to do these and just trying to perfect them over the years. We can become like Sunshine Farm artichokes, <laughs> have like an artichoke stand. I just love them. I think it's so cool to like push the limits of what's possible in your region and, and artichokes is, is that for me. Probably cause I'm California, California born and raised. So trying to get that California here in, in Rochester, New York. Well, that is the third weekly garden tour and we've just had an explosion of growth. Even though we had a lot of setbacks, we had slug mageddon, we had cool temperatures, we had wet ground, wet soil, hard soil, we're noticing a huge improvement in our production in comparison to last year around this time. And that's just because our soil is so much healthier. The plants are darker, the plants are bigger, the fruit is earlier, everything is just is better and healthier. So it's just a demonstration that no-till takes time, but once it starts to, to pay off, it really, really pays off. <laughs> 